Hey everybody, welcome back to Winnemac Attack Hockey. I am Dominic Heater, joined alongside by my partner, Jake Armstrong. We've made it through another week of hockey. Jake, how are you doing? I'm great. It has been another exciting week. The season is just building and getting greater as we go along, and I'm excited to keep it going. All right, buddy. Well, let's jump right in. First, we have a trade that has happened this week. Uh, we mentioned last week how we were going to keep an eye on the trade deadline, and Buffalo did not hesitate. They traded Eric Stahl to the Montreal Canadiens. Jake, tell me a little bit about what you think. Is Eric Stahl making out like a bandit here? All right, so really Montreal is the real winner because they only gave up a few picks, and they end up with Eric Stahl, who's a great player. He just couldn't really get it going in Buffalo, but no one can. Uh, that's the problem, and that's why they're selling all these players. But for Montreal, you're picking up a solid player for pretty much nothing, and they're on the brink, so they're a team that needs to make a late-season push to keep their playoff spot. Yeah, he's got the leadership. He's a veteran. He's got a lot of points in his NHL career and experience that he brings with him over to the Canadians. But, Jake, uh, for Buffalo, does this mean that they're selling everybody, like Taylor Hall, for instance? Uh, Taylor Hall has been a name that's been mentioned. Uh, obviously, there's no guarantee. Maybe manage management thinks that they can extend him past this year, but he is only on a one-year deal, which makes him an ideal rental and someone that they can give away in exchange for assets. So some names that have been mentioned so far are the Oilers, the Panthers, and the Blues, who are actually the front runners right now. And all of those teams have... Uh, well, Buffalo has a certain demand for Taylor Hall. They were hoping for a first, but teams aren't willing to give that up. So now the demand has become a second-round pick, a prospect, and another asset. So not a prospect, but like a mid-tier like NHL bottom six guy, something like that would be the third ask. All right. Do you think that the $8 million cap hit would deter any of those guys? Uh, it's a one-year deal. So that's not going to hurt you into the future. But it's also, you, you have to make room for that, which is why a team like the Blues, uh, they just healthy scratched Mike Hoffman, who has a $4 million cap hit. If you get rid of him, you're only bringing in four mil with Taylor Hall. So a team who wants him may have to send somebody with a big contract the other way. That makes sense. All right, so we'll see how that ends up going in this next week. Uh, so up next, uh, as everyone has probably heard, NHL referee Tim Peel has been fired for some comments that he accidentally slipped in a game. Jake, you have more on the story for us. All right, so he accidentally left his uh, live mic on. So on the broadcast, you could hear him say, after a pretty bad call against the Predators, I just wanted to call something against Nashville. And this is uh, something that a lot of refs actually do, where they might have made a bad call earlier in the game, where they're just trying to make up for it. So they probably missed something that they should have called against Nashville earlier that they're saying, okay, we'll give them one now to make up for it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it was just him, or was he the only one to get punished in this instance? I think it's a big problem across all of sports, really. In fact, on this uh, play, or on this uh, slip-up, the other ref responds with, uh, yeah, that's fine, or something along those lines. Like, he didn't... Uh, object to this he just kind of went along with it and went as if it was just every day you just kind of accept that there's going to be makeup calls so yeah I don't think that uh, Peel was the only guy doing this so how do you think the NHL is going to respond moving forward with the whole referee thing and how do you think the fan base is going to react because for me personally you know I think that some of the fans might be questioning the the calls and the games and if there's favoritism because obviously there's some favoritism going on uh, it, as we heard from that leak. Uh, well it's obvious that the league for now is just trying to put a bit of a band-aid on it. Uh, Peel was actually about to retire anyway so in about a month uh, by the time he got fired he would have been retiring anyways. So really they just saved face. They uh, didn't really fire him because he was about to leave anyways. They probably talked it out and he just said, yeah, let me go, it's fine. Uh, but mm -hmm. they didn't punish the other referee who was obviously involved in the play. 
So obviously they're not doing a whole lot about the ref problem. I got you. Well, moving on to our next bit of news. The Boston Pride have won the Isabel Cup. Jake, how'd that go? Well, it's great for, you know, women's sports to have the, the NWHL. And the Boston Pride played a good year. They had trouble getting the league even going this year because of COVID. In fact, when the playoffs started, they had to postpone until they could get uh, everyone back and quarantined and safe to play. One of the teams even dropped out of the playoffs because they just didn't see the risk being worth it. And so it was a tough season, similar to how the NHL had their bubble last year. But these women's teams worked hard. Uh, there's only six of them, uh, except they are expanding to Montreal next year. So they will have seven teams next year, which is nice to see the game growing. And you just have to, you know, give stick taps to the Boston Pride for bringing home a 4-3 win over the Minnesota Whitecaps yesterday. Yeah, that's great news. And you like to see the league start to grow a little bit. I know that the NHL, with Seattle coming in, that's got to be exciting for... Uh, for them as well to, to have Montreal join the league there. Right, it's just really an exciting time for women's hockey. Especially over in Boston. Yeah, I'm All actually right. rocking my Bruins jersey right now, so, you know, go Boston. <laughs> All right, up next we have the Buffalo Sabres, and my friends, it doesn't get any better. They're on a 17-game losing streak as of right now. Jake, do you think they're going to break the record or are they going to come out and pull an upset here shortly? Regardless of what happens with the record, this 18th, potentially 18th straight loss is going to have the best viewership all year long. Like, I'm talking Game 7 Stanley Cup Final, no. Game 18 of the losing streak for Buffalo Sabres is going to have record viewership just because the question after this is going to be, where were you? when the Sabres broke the record. As a Sabres fan, how do you think you'd react? Um, oh, you can't be taking it well. You know, Eichel's hurt. They've been rebuilding a long time. They've already got the longest playoff drought in the league right now. Uh, they've never won a Stanley Cup. They've been in the league for a good amount of time. You can't be happy about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would not be either. I honestly feel really bad for all the Buffalo fans right now. But, uh, hey, at least your football team's doing good. So, <laughs> All right, so now we have another trade that went down just a couple days ago. Brendan Lemieux was traded to the Kings from the New York Rangers in exchange for a fourth-round pick. And Jake will have more on that here in a little bit when we start talking about some key players for the week. So our last bit of news is... Uh, more of a sad piece, uh, if you haven't heard, Bobby Plager, a longtime member of the St. Louis Blues, really uh, a huge part of that organization has passed away. Jake, as a Blues fan, how is the community and the team uh, mourning this loss? It's obviously a sad time for Blues fans as he was an original Blue, uh, but you just got to get through it by thinking of all the good times that you had with him. Uh, so I remember the banner raising when the Blues actually lowered his brother Barkley, who had already died. Uh, they lowered his uh, banner because they retired his number as well. And then they raised both numbers with their names at the same time, which was really just a, a sweet moment for Bobby to be there to see him and his brother go up. Uh, and now that we've seen him go, it's just even more reminiscent. And uh, I know as a Blues fan, I remember in particular when the Blues unveiled their new uh, light blue alternate jerseys. Uh, Bobby was there to give the jerseys to the team, and when he did it, this was August of 2018, he said, these are the boys that are going to get me my Stanley Cup parade. And you know what the Blues did that spring? They won the Stanley Cup and got him that parade. That's awesome. You love to see it. Uh, you know, the Blues had been waiting a long time for that Stanley Cup, and you know, it makes me really happy to see that Bobby got a chance to experience that before he decided, you know, uh, before he passed away. So that's awesome. Yeah, uh, he was Mr. Blue, and everything the Blues stand for will, you know, keep going even after he's gone. That's really what you work for. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, speaking of the Blues, 
let's hop into our standings because they are holding on tight. But let's start with the Central Division first. No surprise, the Tampa Bay Lightning are in the lead. However, the Carolina Hurricanes are only one point behind them and they beat them just a couple days ago. So this is going to be really interesting because I think Carolina might be taking the lead of the Central here very shortly. Uh, but also things are heating up because the Blackhawks, the Predators, and the Dallas Stars are all within six points of each other. Oh, and also Columbus. So there are four teams fighting for that last playoff spot right now. So things are really starting to heat up as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. Then over in the East, the Capitals lead it with 50 points, the first in that division to hit 50, followed by the Islanders and the Penguins, and I won't even mention Buffalo. Then over in the West, the Vegas Golden Knights have a one point lead over the Colorado Avalanche who are really heating up right now. Vegas better watch out. Minnesota is locked in third with 43 and St. Louis holds on to that fourth place spot, but they're not hanging on by much. So they got to start winning some games if they want to stay put. Finally, over in the North, Toronto stays in the lead with 46. Winnipeg has claimed the number two spot with 44, Edmonton 43, and the Canadians, who just acquired Eric Stahl, are already in fourth place at 37. Jake, out of all of these teams, who do you think we need to be watching as the playoffs get closer and closer? Uh, really, you mentioned the Central Division. That fourth seed there is a tight race. Also, in the West, that fourth seed is a tight race. It seems like all year long, it's been a battle for who's going to win the division, who's going to get one, who's going to get two. But lately, it's heating up around that fourth spot because if you're fifth, you're not making it into the playoffs. So you have several teams just fighting. They know it's do or die right now for that last spot. So that's where I'm watching. Yep, me too, partner. All right, so let's hop into our players to watch for the week. Jake, let's start with you. Who do you got? Number one, I have Johnny Goodrow just because I feel bad for the guy because he was about to enter his 500th game and when his coach was asked about it, he said, let's hope he has more energy than he had in his 499th game. And he just like roasted him, even though this is a star player on your team. Insulting him is not gonna make him play better in his 500th game. And if you're gonna have that attitude, he's probably not gonna play better in his 501st or 502nd game. You have to find a way to get him out of his slump without, you know, insulting him. And it's not just Johnny Goodrow. The Flames are just fundamentally not there. And maybe Goodrow should point his finger the other direction and say, maybe it's you, coach. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, obviously, he has a lot of talent. We've all seen it. Uh, so to go into your 500th game and have your, have your coach talk about you like that, that's not good. It doesn't look, uh, doesn't look great for the Calgary Flames right now. Right, it should be a celebration. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy, do you have a second player on your list? I do. We mentioned him earlier. Brendan Lemieux. He is, uh, it actually kind of disappoints me, he's not related to Mario Lemieux, but he is a good player in his own right. He's not the guy that you're going to see lighted up on the score sheet, but for the locker room, he's huge. If one of your teammates goes down, it's a dirty hit, He's already there. He's in the guy's face. He's going to make him think twice about doing it again because he's a fighter. He's a grinder. He's going to go to the dirty areas, and he's just going to fight for your team, which is what every team could use. And I think the Kings, who are also fighting for that last spot in the West, they're going to be able to use him and really boost their team for the rest of the season. All right. Thanks, Jake. So I got two players to watch for the week as well, and my first one being Micah Sabinijad from the New York Rangers. If you guys haven't heard, he's been playing very well recently, especially against the Philadelphia Flyers. Sorry, guys. Uh, in two games, not just one, in two games, he had six points. Six against the Philadelphia Flyers, in which he had hat tricks in both. But I want to keep an eye on this guy, not just because of that, but also because he started the season super slow, and everyone was, you know, questioning, where is he? He was supposed to be a breakout player this year. So I just want to point out, he has 27 points this season. 12 came in two games. 
So, in the rest of his games, he has 15 points. So, is it a fluke, or is he really picking up steam? We're going to have to pay attention. So, Mike has been a jad. I'm keeping my eye on you this week. All right. Then, also, we mentioned this guy earlier for my second player, Eric Stahl. He was great for Minnesota for many years. And I think that it was a blessing for him to get out of Buffalo, uh, especially to be the first one. Uh, so... I think he's going to do great with Montreal. Uh, I'm curious to see how he's going to, where he's going to play in their system, but I know that either way he's going to produce. And if it's not on the stat sheet, it's going to be in the locker room. You just know with that guy. Um, so keep an eye on him. He has the potential to score lots of goals. He has 439 in his career, and I don't think he's going to disappoint Montreal. Uh, one thing about Eric Stahl, the question mark is not going to be on his ability to play. He's a great player. We know that. But... He spent the majority of his career in Minnesota, where he didn't get a lot of playoff experience. Uh, and then I don't think he picked up any pointers in Buffalo. So it's going to be interesting to see how he picks things up in the playoffs and if he is that playoff performer that the Montreal Canadiens are hoping for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. It's going to be really interesting to see how he reacts over there in Montreal. But I hope that he plays great because that team... They could be dangerous going into the playoffs if he, if he is that player that they're hoping for. And that will be fun to watch. Yes, sir. All right, before we close, do you have any thoughts as we get ready to move into this next week of hockey? As always, I am super excited to watch another great week of hockey. All right, my friend. Well, thank you all for joining us for this week's edition of NHL Weekly Update. We will see you next time. <laughs>